thank you to Streetwise and IRL Art um, for putting this together. We've been in contact with Leia over the last uh, probably five or six months now, um, trying to put all this together. And um, these workshops are in conjunction with Streetwise's new steps into adding technology to their art programs. And one of the big things that we're going to be focusing on this year is augmented reality. So that looks like the filters you see on Instagram or the different effects. And I'm sure everyone here has seen it to some extent of artwork being augmented and new layers being added. Um, so these workshops are going to cover the um, three major components, um, which is the prepping artwork for augmented reality, where we're going to be tweaking images, talking about how to photograph them and talk about how to prepare them for animations. Um, workshop two is going to be tomorrow, and that's going to cover specifically animation um, and augmented reality programs, um, specifically Artivive is the one that we're going to be talking about. And then the third workshop is on the second, and that is going to be an intro to 3D design, um, where I'll be covering different 3D programs and um, help everyone figure out what the best options are for them. Um, so yeah, so here, I'm going to just jump right into the proposal here or a proposal. That's how many proposals I write. Um, just talk about proposals all day. So anyways, welcome to workshop 01, prepping artwork for augmented reality. Um, and I'm just going to go through the first slides, um, but then maybe give Annie a chance to introduce herself and talk about um, what IRL does. Um, but yeah, pretty much this is our full schedule. Um, here's our first three classes here. Um, prepping art for AR, animation, augmented reality, 3D design. Um, and this is all in anticipation for artists that are applying to Streetwise because the applications close on July 30th. So we hope that these workshops will help give artists the tools that if they're feeling interested in um, doing the animations and more technology part, not just the painting, that these classes would help you on that mission. Um, so then uh, to continue this calendar, um, August 15th through September 1st is when all our artists will be notified for who was selected for Streetwise Boulder. Um, and then is going to be our second series of classes closer to the event um, where we're going to be um, talking more about augmented reality and other tools, as well as projection mapping. Um, uh, we're going to be bringing in some local projection mapping artists to help talk about this and um, give us all sorts of industry tips and tricks. Um, and then on the 15th, we're going to be covering NFTs, the metaverse, and other technologies such as RFID chips, um, VR headsets, and more. Um, so, and then September 29th through October 2nd will be the Streetwise Boulder event where all of these artists will be putting up beautiful pieces of work. Um, so yeah, we're very excited about um, all of these classes and um, IRL's ability to contribute um, to Streetwise in the areas of uh, expertise that we're really um, passionate about right now. Um, so here's some more info just um, discussing that. Um, but Annie, I don't know if, if you wanted, if you had any words to say about, um, about IRL art and uh, why we're here. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Annie. Nice to see all of y'all. And um, ultimately, I'm going to try to kick this person real quick. Just a second. Sorry. About that. I think that worked. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. The internet is a crazy place. Um, so anyway, I'm Annie and um, IRL Art is a super cool collective of artists and art directors. And we're really passionate about like bridging communities and education. Uh, we document a lot of, you know, what we're doing uh, publicly just for the sake of education so other people can 
re really utilize these tools too. And um, yeah, ultimately just really excited to, um, you know, be sharing a lot of what we've learned uh, over the last couple of years as technology has been growing and finding new ways to weave this technology into like multimedia work. Um, and we have a brick and mortar gallery down in Rhino Arts District. And yeah, we, we do a lot of like temporary art direction. Um, we have another uh, light-based project coming up in Rhino um, in September called Luminade. We just got done with Sonic Bloom. So we're all over and just, you know, are passionate about providing opportunities for artists and, and just uh, really uplifting the creative community here in Colorado. Sweet. Thank you, Annie. Um, yeah, and as you all know, this is for Streetwise Boulder, which is an amazing mural program in uh, Boulder, Colorado. And we're really, um, yeah, really excited and blessed to be able to work alongside them and um, put all of our skills together. Um, so and really, we really hope that these classes um, help you guys uh, learn some more tools and figure out how to utilize all this new technology to enhance your artwork. So, um, yeah, so um, I guess I can just jump right on in. So workshop one, how to prepare your artwork for animation and AR integration. Um, so we're going to be going over um, a few things. First is going to be examples of AR content from local artists. Um, then we're going to be going on to a list of resources on professional and free uh, desktop programs, as well as mobile apps of how to edit your photos, remove backgrounds, you know, do whatever process you need to prep your files for video. Um, the next is going to be how to photograph existing artwork or murals if you're trying to animate some a piece that already exists. Um, and then we're going to be also going over digital art tools and like digital art drawing tools and how to utilize those for animation and other processes as well. Um, and finally, we're going to wrap it up. Um, after all the slideshows, we're, we're going to do an Adobe Photoshop tutorial where I'm actually um, through the next three days going to be from start to finish um, putting together a art piece from scratch to a finished AR product. So that's really what we're hoping you guys can get out of it and see is how to do it from start to finish. So, um, so yeah, let's go right in. So these are some wonderful examples of AR artists. Um, some of you guys might be familiar with these people or good friends with them. Cetera is awesome, uh, extremely skilled. And right now he's actually doing a project with uh, Meta or Facebook and um, is definitely getting some extremely high profile clients and opportunities. And um, just a really good example of an artist that's um, become extremely successful with their digital art um, and, and is here locally. So it's a really great example. If you guys don't know, who he is or haven't followed him yet, I would definitely check it out. Um, he's definitely top tier digital artist. So, and, and a very friendly kind person. I'm sure would be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, so moving on here, we have Sierra Bourne. Sorry about all the sound, hope it's not too loud. Um, but yeah, so here she was able to take the piece she created, um, augment it, through virtual programs. Um, I believe this, this looks like After Effects to me. And then from there, she was able to hyperimpose it back onto the mural. Yeah, and really create these stunning effects um, that just a regular mural could not do. So, um, Really awesome work. Also give her a follow. Um, she posts a lot of really cool projects. Um, another great example of amazing digital and physical artist is A.L. Grime. Um, definitely um, had to give her a shout out as well because she's definitely been 
pushing that as well. Um, some people start with a physical piece and then move on to digital. Um, but in some cases you can do both where you can start with the digital, move on to physical, and then you have the digital file ready to go for um, animating and editing. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that some more, but just uh, wanted to give you guys some really great examples here. Um, another awesome example is Chris Haven. He's been um, a, pretty much an OG doing um, AR content. Um, really excited to put some of his work as well. Um, as someone who is very, uh, very prolific traditional artist who paints things almost daily. Um, it's really cool to see some examples of how he takes his art um, and, and animates it and augments it in very simple and creative ways. Um, so another very great example of traditional artist that's able to just add a little bit more with his physical or with his um, these tools and different kinds of digital art processes. Um, and then I've got one of my own here. Um, this is a piece that I did last December um, and it was a project and um, kind of showcase of how all these processes can be used. So um, I actually sculpted this in my VR headset, similar to how Acetra does a lot of his work as well. Um, and then I brought that into different, two different 3D modeling programs like ZBrush to add a lot of this texture um, and then Blender to add the lighting. From there, I transferred that over and painted it as closely as I could. And then from there, I was able to utilize that picture to turn it into a 3D AR filter. Um, there's a series of different programs that you can do these on. Um, and my whole intention of these workshops is to walk you guys through all the different tools and pick out the best medium and the best technique that works for you guys. Um, the cool thing about this too is because we had these 3D models, we actually ended up 3D printing them as well and turning them as a prize in our NFT claw machine, um, the world's one and only NFT claw machine, which is at the IRL gallery um, there in Rhino. Uh, check out IRL art if uh, on any social media page if you guys want any more info. So um, I guess we can go right into the desktop programs and mobile apps for photo editing and digital art. Um, so this is a pretty small list because I wanted to make sure that I was sharing things with you guys that I understood and knew about. Um, there's a lot of programs out there. And if you guys have any um, suggestions or other tools that you think should be on this list, um, please feel free to drop them in the chat or uh, DM me directly at, at Yule Tech on, on social media. Um, or, or on email at yule at irlart.com. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to take any feedback, but I'm excited to show you guys this list because these are a lot of the tools that I've used and a lot of people in my community have used um, that um, I know you can find a lot of support for in terms of um, uh, tutorials and resources, as well as a lot of um, people here in the area that work with this software. Um, so you wouldn't be all alone using a strange program. Um, so a few um, major ones, um, I would say Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is kind of my bread and butter. I'm sure everyone here is familiar with it. Um, we will be doing a Photoshop demonstration uh, a little bit later uh, from start to finish of how to import an object in and cut it out and prep all your files for animation. Um, so Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator are pretty similar in a lot of ways in terms of their tools for manipulating images and, and adding different parts and pieces. Um, but Illustrator specifically has better vector and 3D capabilities. A lot of people who do graphic design work and illustration um, use Adobe Illustrator, while people who are specifically doing like photo editing and softer techniques um, that's what Photoshop would be used for. Um, also, one of the best things about Photoshop, um, it, it does cost money. You can get a package deal 
for a lot of these. Um, and I will provide links for that in just a second, but they do offer a seven day um, trial, which I definitely advise using. Um, I know that some of these programs seem a little intimidating because they have so many tools and parts and features. Um, but I think starting with the seven day trial and even doing some of their stock tutorials that load directly when you download the program um, would be a great help. Um, also at the end of this, um, I will be dropping a link to this entire uh, presentation, but in a Google doc. So you'll be able to find all this info with links to all these items um, anytime you'd like. So the other ones that I wanted to mention, um, unlike Photoshop and Illustrator, which are part of the Adobe suite, um, there are some free alternatives. Um, and GIMP is one of the oldest and tried and tested uh, photo editing programs. It's 100% free. Um, and, and easy to download. It's only for uh, desktop, but I believe it's for both Mac and PC. But GIMP is very similar to Adobe Photoshop where it has uh, almost an identical set of tools uh, and uh, layers and different effects. Um, but it's, you know, it's a free pocket version of Photoshop. So you can't do everything on there, um, but for someone who's just learning or doesn't have the income to purchase an Adobe uh, package deal, then this would be a great place to start. Pixlr is very um, similar. Um, it's, it's more styled like, a, um, like an app in terms of it has the editing features at the bottom and um, it's, it's an even more simpli uh, simplified version of GIMP. Um, so next below that, um, I want to go over a couple mobile app options. I know that not everyone has a computer. Um, and even if you do have a computer, having one that might have a, a good graphics card or, you know, enough of a performance based computer to run some of these programs. I've personally run Photoshop on some very cheap computers in my past. So if, if you feel like the quality computer is holding you back from doing some of this photo editing, um, Photoshop or Illustrator um, can definitely handle it. it. Might be a little slower, um, but I would not let that hold you back if if you're trying to learn the tools. Um, one of the big things I would say that require the the graphics cards and all that compatibility is the video editing software. But all of that we're going to cover tomorrow. Um, so for mo mobile apps. Um, the, the one on the top of my list is Procreate. Um, uh, Kinthik uh, is a team member here um, from IRL Art. I'm super glad he's in the call. Thank you, Andrew. Um, but he's been working on Procreate and I've been peeking over his shoulder and getting to watch the process. Um, and I think this is a really amazing app, especially if you are sketching or drawing. Um, I know that Initially, we're talking about prepping art for AR, but what if you're starting off with digital art? What if you'd like to draw um, a digital piece and animate that? Um, Procreate is a great tool that comes with all sorts of brushes, all sorts of textures and packs, um, and, it's, and it's only $10 for a one-time purchase um, of the app, and this works on both iPhone and iPad. I don't believe it has any kind of Android compatibility right now, but... Um, um, that's why I've listed a few um, other ones below. Um, so Pix Pixomatic is a great tool that I've tried and tested on my phone as well. And this is uh, a simple phone app editor where you can cut and remove layers. You can add multiple things. It's pretty much like a little Photoshop in your pocket. Um, unlike Procreate, it doesn't have artistic tools, but Pixomatic has a lot of those photo editing tools, um, which definitely work best for the goal of these workshops, which is putting together layers and putting together an um, animated version of a, of a physical art piece. Uh, another one I'd like to list is Object Removal Light. Um, this one is also free and uh, can do very similar things and has all sorts of touch-up tools for photos. Um, if like your wall has 
grass or random textures or screws or stuff like that, this is one of those good touch up tools um, and background removers as well. Um, so I know I've given a slight overview of some of the tools, but here I'm gonna go in and um, uh, show a rough comparison. So here we can see, um, and, and again, like feel free to screenshot this or we're also going to be, uh, we're recording this currently and we're gonna be putting all of these on YouTube um, as the week progresses. So you'll be able to come back and visit these videos at any time. Um, so um, for Photoshop, again, it's not free, but we're able to have all these different options. Uh, Photoshop does not have vectors, but Illustrator does. Um, and and uh, GIMP here is free and has all the same tools. Um, there's probably multiple other lines that I can add and will add in the future. But for now, I just wanted to give you guys um, a rough visual understanding of the tools and, and the, the important things that I'm personally looking for um, in the software, which are editing tools for manipulating the images, transparent layers, so I can have multiple layers and cut objects out, as well as the proper file exporters and importers, um, and then bonuses like text and different effects like drop shadows or glowing edges or whatever that might be. Um, so here I'm going to do a little bit deeper dive on some of these main programs. Um, Adobe Photoshop is kind of my bread and butter. I've been using it since I was probably 10 or 11 years old um, for different random art projects. And um, this is uh, my most used program for very obvious reasons. Now, if, if you are more native to a mobile app situation, something like Procreate would be, I feel like it's best comparison in terms of the format and the tools and the ability to use brushes and different effects. Um, so, so here, we're just going to go over the Photoshop layout. Um, it's very similar to a lot of other editing programs as well. We're at the top, file edit, and different effects of how you can select your things, open up different windows, get help, view it full screen, or in edit mode, um, as well as a whole bunch of different other tools. Um, on the left here, you have your artist tools, everything you need from text to drawing boxes to um, cropping images um, and very similar icons that go across a lot of these programs. Um, so yeah, brushes, selection tools, erasers, cloning tools, um, the perspective tool, cropping and more. Um, and then this column is where you can manage different windows that have different effects and or your history and the different layers of your project so that you can layer your files and uh, recreate new objects. So here's another little uh, showcase on Procreate. Um, some of these were copied and pasted from their website about um, having control over your brushes, being able to create your own brushes and very similar to Photoshop, it has the layer systems, the different tools and effects um, so a lot of these drawing programs are very similar. It's just trying to pick one that's the most comfortable for you. And um, I just wanted to share the ones that um, myself and my community members have been using um, as well. So um, yeah, once again, um, brushes, selection tools, um, some of the cool apps, unlike Photoshop, which is very manual, they have items like Quick Shape where you can draw a rough circle and it'll pop up a perfectly crisp circle, which can really help when you are doing more graphic design stuff or trying to get some symmetry. Some of those snapping features where it'll align it properly or mirroring features. There's a lot of different cool tools and effects that um, make drawing a lot easier now. Um, as well as things like stars and wood effects and scratches and textures. I see Andrew saying that they can do AR demos and paint directly on 3D models as well. So all sorts of crazy tools. Um, 
and definitely one of the most advanced ones out there and also ones with probably the largest database of tutorials and information. If you're trying to learn or want to find any info, um, it's very available for this program. Um, so I'm going to go on to, this is Pixomatic. So I wanted to make sure that I spent enough time covering mobile apps as well, because not everyone has a computer. Um, so this is one of the best apps I found that's extremely straightforward. Um, I actually paid for, they have a $30 pro version that lets you use their whole suite of tools. Um, but here you can see, this is the background removal tool. They've made it pretty easy and it actually uses an AI generator to help cut these objects out. So you trace the rough object and, and roughly fill it in what you want to save and it perfectly cuts out and removes the background. Um, and sometimes there's little blemishes, but it's very easy to come in and touch it up. They also have this, uh, and that's using this cut tool right here. This app, if you pay for the full version, which is $30 a year, um, Procreate is cheaper and you can probably do the same thing on Procreate. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more specific and don't wanna get lost in all the drawing tools, or don't have enough memory or space on your phone, um, this app is very cheap and very simple. Um, and even the free versions, you can do some basic cutouts. Um, right here, I've been putting a QR code for um, each one of these. So feel free to scan this with your phone and it should open up the, the app web store um, to, to download it. So here you can see I cut the object out simply. I was also able to add um, effects and shadows and blurs. Um, and then um, similar to Photoshop and a very important tool when, when working with digital files is this ability to do layers. You know, if you can only have one image at a time, um, it really limits your ability to create a scene or use effects and, or use layers. Um, so this layering process of, and being able to organize those layers um, I think is one of the most important parts of prepping your artwork for the AR. Um, and also knowing how all these layers look when they're on top of each other. Um, so big fan of Pixomatic, I would check it out, um, give it a try. Um, and then here is just um, the QR codes again. This one's gonna bring you right to the Adobe product suite. Um, the next will be GIMP and then Procreate and Pixomatic. I'd say these are like the four main ones um, that I think are worth checking out. Um, one thing I'd like to say while we're on the topic of the Adobe products is um, here, I'm actually going to open up a little tab and show you guys what it looks like. So the Adobe suite um, has a bunch of different options available and um, whether you're just looking for photo editing tools or you want video editing um, or you're not really sure or you want all of them, um, this will be able to here, let me pull this up. Okay, so pulling up the Adobe Creative Cloud page right here. So here, compare plans. Um, for anyone that's interested, this is what it looks like. Right now it's interesting. You can get Photoshop for $21 a month or you can buy the photography package and it's only $10 a month. Um, so there's different options and different deals. One of the best deals I will say, um, here is the Creative Cloud All Apps. This kind of gets you the full package um, of different programs. It, it's uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, which is the video editing software, and Acrobat Pro. Um, and it's $54 a month. I will say though, if you have access to a student email or um, ed like education email, you can actually get the Creative Cl Cloud all apps for $20 a month, which is the best deal hands down. Um, is a really, really great option. 
And if you still have a school email, um, this is a really um, one of the best deals you can get in terms of um, the amount of access and the full package that you get. So yeah, look at all these programs that you're able to get here. Premiere Pro, After Effects, Lightroom, Animate, Dreamweaver. And then there's all these unique tools that I personally haven't even gotten to spend time with, but all these unique um, 3D animation tools that Adobe offers as well. There's so much to learn out there. Oh, and then Arrow as well, which is Adobe's own AR filter system, which I will cover tomorrow in our talk about all the different AR programs. So this is a really great deal. Um, I would just check it out. It's really easy to get to off the adobe.com site. And it's also um, this link right here that'll bring you to those um, different products and packages. Uh, yeah, I'll just let that sit for just a second. Um, but yeah, all sorts of really great options. I know that there's a lot more out there. Um, but yeah, again, I did not want to speak on programs that I personally haven't had much experience with. Um, but I hope that I can recover all these topics soon and um, get everyone's feedback about what different programs, specifically free programs, um, that I should be putting on these lists. Um, the main reason we're doing these classes is about accessibility, to make sure that artists get access to the tools and education and resources they need so they can start messing around with these things and not spending too much money out of pocket until they know what they need. Um, so, um, yeah, we're really happy to share these with everyone. Um, so I'm going to go on to the next slide here where we're gonna actually talk about photographing your work. And I saw, I saw Julio in there. Um, I had to stick some of your work in as well. Um, and, uh, cause this is one of my best examples. But, um, so photographing your work, there's a few really important things. Um, if you're starting with a pre-existing piece and you're trying to prep it for AR, if there are shadows or weird things that, that change the color or contrast of the piece too much from the original one, it's going to look really weird when you try to transfer those parts um, and it won't line up very well. Um, so my advice is to get the best shot as possible. I would take it in full light or in full shadow. Um, you know, when, when you've got a big shadow like this, you know, I mean, like you could probably fix that in Photoshop, but it would be brutal and a waste of your time. So I would, um, really try to get a nice straight on shot and make sure there aren't things in the way um, that are going to cause issues or that you have to spend too much time trying to fix. Um, uh, another thing to talk about is um, perspective. A lot of the times, um, especially with murals, not all the time you can get a good straight on shot. Um, so how do you go about this, whether it's taking from an angle or stitching multiple pictures together? You know, there are, there are different ways of going about it um, where you can still get and capture your full piece and get it straight on so that when you build your animation, you don't have to build it at a weird angle or do anything like that. Um, and, and that could be obtained through the perspective tool, um, which a lot of different photo editing programs have. Um, and I'll actually be covering those um, here shortly. Um, so another pro tip here take time lapses of your work. Um, you know, the, the finished image is not the only thing you want and uh, the time lapses make really great content. But also, if you're struggling on trying to figure out what you, how you can animate your piece, you could even post a time lapse as your AR filter. Um, so I would always take every opportunity you can to document your work and document each step. You know, I mean, maybe your effect could be the progression, you know, just take pictures and it slowly fades in between from start to finish um, or goes through the whole time lapse. So there's a lot of really interesting ways that, you know, we're, you don't just have to cut something out and make it move. Um, there are all sorts of ways that you can enhance the artwork or also, you know, tell a story. Um, like if you have a bunch of children painting the mural, being able to videotape that. And then when you scan the AR filter, 
um, you see all the kids painting. Um, so lots of little clever ways that you can go about um, utilizing the AR filter. Um, so one of the next things we're going to talk about is editing your photo. Um, this is probably my most important step in terms of making sure that you have everything you need moving forward so you don't have to go back and fix things or make it look better. Um, photo editing is um, yeah, extremely important. And a lot of times when you try to capture your artwork, you're never going to get it to the full extent and quality that you want. Um, that's why luckily on our phones now, there are all sorts of really great editing um, options. And I'm going to pull it up and show you guys. Um, but exactly what's on the screen there. Here we have all sorts of options um, down below when you hit edit. And I know it's a little different for uh, Android versus Mac, but most phones have, smartphones at least have this capability where you're able to use uh, and fix the saturation, the brightness. Um, you know, these aren't just for selfies. This is also for making photos look really great. Um, and one of the things is, is that the majority of the time these effects um, affect the entire art piece. Um, let's say you have similar to this photo where my darks are dark down here, but they're very washed out up here. Um, that's where a program like Photoshop comes in, where you have more control with things like masks, um, which are um, layers and effects that you can apply just to certain areas rather than the whole piece, which is what the phone apps can do. Um, also, I know there's some great phone uh, photo editing apps um, as well. So if you guys have any, please feel free to drop them in the link and I will add them to our larger resource doc as well. Um, so another pro tip is when you're photo editing or you're cutting out all your information or you're creating your thing, take time lapses of those as well. Yeah, some of my most viewed videos um, on social media are specifically time lapses of me doing my photo or video editing. Um, so I think this is some of the best content you can get out there. And when you're using multiple programs and doing different things, um, it's very entertaining to watch. Um, big fan. So I would definitely take that into consideration. Um, uh, one great program that I should add to this list, I'll make sure to add on the final spreadsheet is OBS. OBS is like a standard streaming video recording um, system and it's completely free. Uh, I use it to do all my screen recordings and I'm actually screen recording on OBS. And um, the whole reason the little dude is in the corner right here is, is using OBS. So it's a very powerful tool for screen recording. Um, and I would definitely check out if you've got a, a desktop or computer. Um, all right, so, so yeah, so we're gonna, this is what we're actually gonna be starting on. Um, in the Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to just do some basic edits and turn this raw photo. This is the original photo I took back in 2017 or something um, of the image. And we're going to slowly get it to where we need to um, for video editing. Um, so moving on. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to be covering in the Photoshop tutorial. Start with an unprocessed image and tweak the colors and contrast. Um, then we're going to cut out all the layers that we want and, and prep them for animation, as well as um, come up with a good system. And I'll show you guys how I manage and organize my files just to keep track of all the different parts and pieces um, that are going into it. Um, all right, so I'm actually going to go and open up Photoshop here. So uh, yeah, here we go. I've got the art piece open and I am in Photoshop. So um, as you can see, there's all sorts of things here, brush settings, brushes, character, paragraphs, that's more for text. But then over here gives me properties of my art piece um, as well as my history where every time I do something, 
it'll show me all my history and I can go back in the hierarchy, um, which is very helpful rather than just pressing control Z control um, control Z over and over again. I can actually see everything I'm doing over here um, and then my layers as well. So for this piece, I think the first steps of what we're going to want to do. Um, oh yeah. So before I start, um, we're going to just be walking through this. If uh, you guys have any questions, I'm going to make sure that I pulled my Zoom chat up here um, so I'll be able to see. And oh man, I spot a Scott Bevins. Hello. Um, sweet. So um, yeah, here, let me pull over the chat. All right. So I've got the chat open. As I'm working, if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to drop. Yo. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. All right. So yeah, I think the first things we're going to do is adjust some of the basic settings. I really want to show you guys some, some of the crazy tools and things that Photoshop can do. Um, but I'm also going to make sure I can focus on the tools that I know that some of these uh, phone apps will have as well so that it doesn't get too confusing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, and I'm going to try to keep this simple. There's multiple ways of doing this. Um, so if you're like, what is he doing? Uh, just, uh, this is just a, the, the simplest way that I can find, um, to help instruct people who, who have never used Photoshop before. So, um, so here we can go to image and there's all sorts of adjustments. Um, we could do this with masks and I'm going to show you guys how to do that as well, but this is how to do it in the most basic way. So let's just go to brightness and contrast. We have a lot of grays and where it's supposed to be dark. So with contrast, we're able to get darker, but then brightness, we're able to get it brighter. So that looks a little better already. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. But then I'm going to show you guys another way to do it. So let's go to image adjustment. And then we're going to do levels this time. This is another strange tool, but very similar to brightness and contrast, where you can raise the highs. You can make the, the highlights higher, the midtones darker, lighter, or the dark darker, um, the closer you bring it into the middle. So um, if we get it too dark, then we start to lose some of these um, details that are lower down. Um, and honestly, I have a much higher res photo of this, um, but for the sake of this workshop, see there's all this detail that gets lost when I make it too dark. So I wanna make sure that I set that properly and not make things too dark or too bright. I'm also pressing control minus or plus to zoom in and zoom out in Photoshop. Very handy tool. So also there's this little dragger dropper here. This is highlights, midtones, and dark tones. I could drag this. Uh, oh wait, yeah. So now I'm able to select those rough tones that I'm trying to move and it adjusts that range of color a little more, which is exactly what I wanted. Make it a little darker. Okay, so I feel like compared to my original image, it might be a little too red or yeah, just a little too red. So here's another really cool tool is your uh, color balance. This is something I use a lot. Um, and also when you're photographing murals or big outdoor areas where there's outdoor lighting, um, this is a very important tool. You can find the same thing on your phone as well. They have a little color balance thing on most phone editors, but this is where in this picture, I feel like I've got a little too much red and a little too much yellow. Um, so here I'm going to turn down the yellow just a little bit. Now it made it just a little bit more pink. So that's when I'm going to turn down the red 
and move it into the blue. Um, here, and then I'll move to green. Okay, so now I'll be able to show you guys. Now it's a little more flesh colored and less like bright orange. Um, this can also be adjusted with the hue and saturation, but it, they all do different things. Um, this adjusts the, the, the hue of the entire piece. Um, and this is something that you can animate as well with the animation programs and change the colors and make it rainbow or, um, and that's something I'll cover tomorrow. So I don't want to just any of that, but here's the actual saturation. We want it very colorful or black and white. Um, so great tool for that. Same with lightness and darkness. Um, a lot of these tools kind of do the same thing, um, but there's just different ways that they interact with each other. Um, so I've been getting the colors great, but I want to make the background black here um, and, and or remove it. Um, so actually, yeah, I'm just going to start removing it because this is the piece I want to animate. Um, my goal is to cut it out and in all the spots that are black, um, I want to put some kind of moving animation or video file back there um, just so I can keep it simple and give people like a really uh, simple goal for the first round. I'm going to show some different stuff as well as um, how to integrate 3D objects into your animations and things as well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it simple so that everyone can either uh, follow along or um, watch the video and get a start to finish product at the end. So I've also cropped it here, made it look a little better and put it more in the center. And then now I'm going to show you guys two different techniques for cutting stuff out. Um, the quickest and easiest way um, is this magic selection tool. It's called Magic Wand or Quick Selection. Um, but from here, it uses some kind of AI tool where it's able to identify certain objects. Um, see, it's not doing so well right now. Let me try that again. So, boom. I'm just going to take this around and it's selecting just the parts that I want to cut out. See how it took some of that out? I can press minus here and remove some of it. Oh, took too much. Sometimes if you zoom in, it can help you do something a little bit more precise. So I'll go back to plus. And I can add some more to the selection. Sometimes you got to fine tweak it. This tool does not work perfectly every time, especially if you're cutting around some pretty detailed stuff. Um, and then I'm going to unlock that. And then when I erase it, um, it'll now be invisible. For those who don't know that, Checker pattern is the invisible texture. So there's nothing there now. Um, and you guys can see that reflected here. So I'm going to go and keep selecting. And it keeps giving me trouble. I'll show you guys the next method for selection. Um, and again, a lot of these tools you can find on GIMP. Um, as well, if you guys are chomping at the bit but don't want to spend any money, that's a great place to start as well. Um, I will say, once you start using GIMP, you're going to be like, man, I should just get Photoshop. Adobe did not pay me to be here. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... And also, like, don't try to do big movements at once because suddenly you can mess it up and then all that work tracing something out doesn't work. 
I'm going to show you guys. Oops. That's not what I was trying to do. Um, so control plus and minus to zoom in and out. As you can see, that edge is not that perfect. Let me zoom in even more. Um, it's kind of got a fuzzy edge on it. You know, it's not that great. So one other option, if you're trying to get it more precise, I'm going to hold down on this lasso tool. And it's going to give me the polygonal lasso tool. This is probably my most used tool ever, hands down, like across any program. But this is what you use to cut out slowly. Um, another important thing to talk about is pixelation while I'm doing this. Um, as you can see, the pixels are starting to get kind of big. Um, so it's important to start with this as high resolution of photos as possible um, and know that like you might be able to take an image that's super low resolution and put it next to an image that's high resolution and you make it work um, but i think it's always good practice to get as high resolution pictures whether whether you're photographing your own artwork or taking artwork off the internet for reference or background images or something. Um, do your best to get it as high resolution as possible. So here you guys can see it's a lot slower. Um, but take your time. Looks really good. Um, and sometimes around these corners, you end up doing straight lines. I would, you know, try to be respectful of how close in you are and if people will actually see it. Um, but at the same time, remember not to skimp out on details. The cleaner the cut, the better it's going to look. So, And here we go. I'm just going up. Also, as you can see, I'm going a little bit past the edge, just tiniest bit, like one or two pixels. And this is so that there isn't like a sharp black edge around my item. If you guys have ever cut stuff out online, I'm sure when you're doing stuff with a white background, you, you guys know exactly what I mean. Um, so um, there we go. So now I'm going to select that whole section right here and boom. So as you guys can see, um, we've got the whole outside perimeter. See, oh, now I don't, I don't like that fuzziness. We use that magic selection thing, but it doesn't work very well. So to guarantee that you're getting some nice clean lines, um, that's where this tool comes in. Clearly takes a lot more time. Um, I'm not going to make you guys sit through all of this. Just a little bit. But once I finish this up, I'll show you guys some of the details. And then boom. All right. So um, realistically, I want to do the same for a lot of these parts and pieces. Um, but in the essence of time, I've already gone ahead and done that. Boom. So um, now, as you guys could see, I've gone in close and cut out all these sections. So you can see some of them are still fuzzy, some of them are sharp, depending on what you do. Um, you know, sometimes you might want something really crisp and clean, but other times, um, for stuff that doesn't matter so much. Um, I try to put, instead of doing everything like this, just focusing on the parts that people are really gonna look at and putting that extra level of detail there. Um, so um, now you've got this great part um, and you can plug it in. And here I'll actually pull up everything. So I've actually cut this into multiple parts here. Just open them all up and let's 
that front part. And one more part. Boom. Okay, so um, now that this is um, an important one to show you guys. So, oh God. So when I cut this out, um, as you can see, this back ring goes behind her. So to cut this thing out and to make it an independent part, there's a lot of pieces that are missing. That's where the Photoshop comes in. Um, and actually, when I did this, I believe I actually used the circle tool here. Um, selected a big chunk that I wanted to copy and paste. And this is where I can show you guys some of the layers. So now I've got just this part that I've cut out. Um, and from here, um, Andrew also mentioned spot healing. And I will show you guys that. Well, actually, I don't really use the spot healing tool, but what I use and is the tried and tested old school way is the cloning tool. Um, and that's actually what we're gonna be using here. So I'm trying to recreate this ring because let's say I wanna make all these parts moving. If I just cut it out right there, um, you're gonna clearly see it's cut out. So if I wanna make some depth and get a full ring so that this lady is in front of the ring here, let's... Um, Okay. Hold on while I struggle. Um, so as you can see, that's where it belongs. But now I've added all that material in the back. And if I zoom closely, you'll see that it's all copied and pasted and blended together just to fill the gap. Um, and that you can do a whole bunch of different ways. In this case, um, I'm just going to show you guys the cloning tool. Well, let me start over. Here we can go. And let's just say I want to copy and paste this part right here. I can go like that. Make sure it's I'm selected on the right layer. Control C, Control V. Um, control copy and paste it. I no, didn't know, but there we go. So now I can start, at least for the really big sections, I'm gonna go Control C, Control V. And it's not perfect, but it's a really simple way of removing objects. Um, I'm sure there's probably at least one person that's like ripping their hair out in the crowd being like, why don't they just use the, this crazy tool? Because um, I don't know it, but that's fine um, because there's infinite amount of ways to get this process down. Um, and this is just a really simple, straightforward way. It takes a little bit more time. Um, and then control, control T is transform, nice little Nice little plug. Um, again, it's not totally perfect, but from there, instead of doing that over and over, I can go over here and I'm going to merge down those few layers that I just made. So now I have this whole part. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste that. Um, so, just with a little bit of repetition, I'm able to recreate the part, extend it, make it look right. Um, and again, it's not 100% perfect. Um, also, like where the headpiece is going to be in front of the piece doesn't matter so much. So, don't invest a lot of time cleaning up a spot that nobody will see anyways. Um, I think efficiency is one of the things that I work on the most, just so that um, it's like I got great ideas, but I don't have enough time to finish them all. So trying to 
make your process as simple and as productive as possible. I think is a major goal that you guys should consider and be like, wow, is this taking me way too long? Um, I mean, I've definitely spent 70 hours on an art piece before. So, you know, if you think it's worth it, go for it. But with the technology, if you are like, this process is taking too long, then maybe Google it. Um, and you might find some other really great, really efficient ways of solving that problem. I think the biggest thing about Googling is knowing the language you have to use. What are you Googling? Like, are you selecting something? Are you copying something? So I think getting in and learning some of the simple processes first will help you figure out what you actually want to do with the program um, rather than whatever I'm doing right now. So, so here now we got the top bit done. I'm going to show you guys the same thing with the bottom. There's not much meat here for me to select and copy and paste. So that's where I get to use that cloning tool. So here, I'm gonna go back to this object and hide those just so we don't get confused here. And then I'm gonna make my brush just a little smaller. And here I can go, let me press Alt and click and select. And I'm able to now replicate exactly what's there um, a little lower down you can see that so as you can see I'm just kind of magically filling in the spot here um, sometimes I pull it from different places so I get a variety of color that was almost too red um, okay And as you can see, what I'm doing is pretty quick and dirty. Um, but specifically for some of these parts that are probably going to be behind something, um, it just really helps having um, when you're doing like cutting per, or like cutting or fabric or stuff like that, they call it a bleed edge. It's that extra little bit of meat that you give yourself so that you don't see those edges. Um, and I think that's a really important part. Um, so that's the tool. Doesn't look very great. Could have probably done it a little better, but um, the idea is just to get rid of some of these things so that doesn't get in our way. Yeah, that's looking great. Um, So now that I've gone ahead and done that and we have this, I'm going to go and erase this circle in the middle. Uh, and then here, like they got the square selection tool, but they also have the elliptical selection tool. So um, it's a little hard to place. I kind of just eyeball it a couple of times and then boom. Um, oh yeah, so I'm trying to, there's multiple layers here. See if I press delete from this right now, it'll just erase that first layer. Um, or if I select this layer and press delete, only erase part of it. So now I'm gonna go down here, merge down, merge down. That's connecting all these layers together. Now when I press delete, boom, it looks great. Um, so realistically, I wanna do the same with this edge as well. Um, that's another cool tool that we can use. Um, there's this smudge tool here. Using the right one? Yeah, smudge. This pretty much just pushes things around. I'm gonna do soft round brush. Hard round gets like a really nice crispy edge, but this is like a soft edge, um, whether you're stretching stuff or painting. So let's see, is that strong enough? Oh no, I don't know what it's doing. Oh wait, there we go. Okay, so now when I apply the smudge tool, 
it's pulling all this stuff away. Um, as you can see, if I select this part, it just kind of drags it along. This works really well around edges. Um, when I do stickers, a lot of the times my stickers are, the edges are too complicated for them to cut. Um, they always send it back to me. So lately what I've been doing is providing them with my own cut file and vector file. Um, and something that I always request is a bleed edge. So instead of like cutting on the inside of your artwork, you can hyper extend the edge just like this. Um, I mean, clearly it doesn't look amazing, but the idea is that it's going um, just like the quickest way to stretch that edge out. Um, just so that when we import this into the art piece, um, same thing, it won't just be cut out right where that second layer is. Um, so, all right, I feel like I've done enough of that. This is what it's going to look like in the end. As you can see, I've already stretched it out, but then came back in and cleaned it up a little so it wasn't so messy. Now that we have this part, so again, it's not just cutting out an object, it's also editing and fixing the parts and pieces um, of your artwork that you want as part of some of the layers um, and making sure that if you're adding a little bit of perspective or something like that, that those pieces, yeah, aren't, don't have just a crisp cutout of what's in front of it. Um, so rebuilding objects is something I do a lot in preparing these files. And if you ever see those history documentary um, films or shows where they've animated some pictures and the artwork and they've just added a little depth to it. That's a lot of what those people do is they'll cut one layer out and they'll go and clean up the background. Um, so it, um, they can now have two separate pieces and it's not just like um, cut out of the background completely. Um, so now that I've got this, let me just go on to this i'm going to go control c then we're going to go to the main shape i'm going to go control v oh well that wasn't the piece i was trying to import but that works too um so now i'm going to go this guy control c control v yeah, no of course it's not working That's why. All right, control V. Now you can see one of the most amazing things about Photoshop is the layer hierarchy and the way that you're able to edit that. So here I can put whatever I want in front of whatever I want. In this case, I'm gonna do it like that. Um, if you guys, oh yeah, and then here, let me do the orb. Um, and this is a good test to show you guys. Um, so if I go control V here. Um, so you can see that that's completely in the front. Um, but if I, or I guess it's not completely, now it's completely. But now I move back here, you'll see it's behind this first layer. Um, Right behind the head, uh, or we could put it behind the arch, which is more similar. Um, so uh, now that we have all these different layers, this is where you know all these different things can like move and and also um, something I'll be showing you guys in Artivive. Um, we're going to be doing a simple demonstration of just replicating your art piece or putting a two-dimensional video on there. But um, some of the things that we're gonna be covering is how to add three-dimensional objects um, and something Artivive offers, which is multiple layers of videos. Um, so that's something we're gonna play around with tomorrow during the workshop. Um, 
But for now, as you guys can see, we have all these layers. Um, and from here, this is where we can do some fun stuff like add some different effects. Um, I use these a lot. Not that many people I know use these, but um, at least that I've talked to, but there's all sorts of fun stuff, especially for graphic design or putting stuff into 3D models where you need like a glowing edge or you're trying to make a neon or something like that. Some really great tools here, um, like Outer Glow. Um, so for example, I think you guys can see it here. Um, and it's like once you've got your cutout objects and parts and pieces, that's when you can add some cool effects and do some different things. So here you can see the opacity, and the spread, the size. Um, and do some really cool effects of how we frame it. Um, the black background on here so we can see everything better. And here, if you hold and cl click some of these certain buttons, there's different things like here's the paint tool and the gradient tool. So we're just going to paint it black for now. As you can see, now we got this big glowing white edge. Um, there's all sorts of crazy things you can do with it. Like you can add different colors um, and parts and pieces. Here's some other quick, easy options that I love to use, iridescent colors. And, um, obviously, though, it does some really crazy effects. Oops, beeping at me. Um, and this can really help, like, help decorate your layers. Like, let's say, like, this piece is... Um, I would say, you know, more realistic with shadows and details. But if you're doing like pop art or something like that, or you've got more simple graphics or shapes, um, you know, cutting them out or adding some kind of glow effect. Um, another great one is shadow. Here, let me show you guys that now. So let me turn that off. But let's turn the drop shadow on. So drop shadow, add some great effects, and make it a little darker. Um, and then, and as you guys can see, it creates an actual shadow. A lot of these tools is actually stuff that I use to design things. Like I'll make a cool shape or art piece, and then I'll put it into uh, Photoshop here, and then add shadows, add depth, um, for example, yeah, let's cancel that. Let's actually cancel all of this. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate this. And control U. Control U is control um, Q and saturation. So I'm going to turn this black and then I'm going to turn it lighter again. So now it's just like a solid object. Um, and this is, you know, another great tool where let's say you have this object in your mural, but you want to completely redecorate it. You want to put a new texture on it or theme or something. Um, this is where you can take these objects. And for example, if we had um, some art piece here, let me use Oh, I'm trying to think. I'm using my friend's computer, so I don't have all of my files in front of me. Um, but I'm going to finish out what I was trying to show you guys here. With me. So here we can go to Bevel and Emboss, for example. That's a tool I love to use, um, where you can create that. Um, Soften it a little, those kind of crisp edges and um, kind of 3D shape here. Yeah. Yeah. Technique, chisel hard, there we go. So now you guys can see if I adjust the angle of the light. Oh, what did I do?
Okay. There we go. So if I adjust the light, you guys can see almost creates this 3D effect inside Photoshop, even though it's not 3D. It's just some of those old school 3D effects. So yeah, this is one of you guys are seeing one of my secret hints of like creating objects and shapes and adding depth to them. Um, one of the big things that I'm hoping that some people might get out of this class too is um, you know, a lot of the times, personally for me, I will actually start with the digital piece. Um, I also do signage work. And before I used to make sketches and like add colors and add all sorts of stuff um, for my, to show my clients. But now I actually go and design it exactly the right size, exactly the right shape. Um, that's how it's like the second the project starts. I've already got something that's a pretty close finished model ready to go to cut out and I don't have to do very much work. And that's the same when you design stuff in Photoshop and use some of the effects to get depth and different kind of effects where it's, um, and that's one of the powers of actually working with your original files. So here, I'm gonna go back to the proposal or the, presentation here um, all the way back to my tab here oh, yeah. so yeah and so and this is what I'm describing where it's like if you actually start with a 3d model even if it's something really rough you know like you want to and a lot of artists do this especially for murals where it's really hard to reproduce those kind of scales um, just off the top of your head you know using reference photos pulling from an initial design or shape, um, you're almost doing the same thing here where you create your shape that you're referencing from. Um, and then that gives you the opportunity to reuse that file, reuse those shapes, re reuse the, the layers, um, you know, that you're creating in Photoshop um, for different effects. Um, um, so, and then here, I think I can, I think I can do something here. Never quite figured that this part out yet, but um, uh, there's all sorts of stuff you could do. Color burn. Wait, wait. Nope. Nope. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, here, this looks weird. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things that you can affect in here. One of the cool parts too is a lot of these things you can also do in the video editing software for each of your layers. So there's a lot of different places where you can um, start tweaking things out. Um, what Andrew said, definitely a lot of happy accidents where you're like, whoa, that's cool. Um, and then you just, you know, click one of these random things and it does something. Um, and, and that's the fun part about Photoshop is like, um, you can definitely play with a lot of things. And if you want to mess with something, for example, but you don't want to mess your file up, that's where you just right click and copy. Or yeah, if you right click, it'll say here, copy, uh, duplicate layer, delete layer. So we're going to duplicate the layer. And the, this is something that I do constantly when I'm working in Photoshop is I, every single time I'm making an updated version of that file, I'm making copies. Um, it's a very, very helpful process um, and helps you keep track of your process as well. Because um, sometimes when you when you do something in the effect, um, you know, you're never going to be able to go back enough times to fix it. That's one of the things about the history too. Um, and this goes for pretty much every program is uh, I like, I don't know a program that's got an infinite control Z, you know, um so another big thing is to save let's do that control save um oh while we're on this um saving in photoshop files or working in in, in with files that have multiple layers um a psd file is like your standard photoshop file it will import up onto google drive and with a lot of other programs um but in terms of file compression and 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 how it manages your file a tiff file 
is something that I highly suggest everyone, if, if you're working on something that's got a lot of layers, a TIFF file does the best to preserve it. Every single time you save it as a PSD, it adds a little bit more compression. Um, and uh, my, my mother is actually the one who taught me Photoshop. She is an OG Photoshop master for editing like real photography and adding new clouds and fixing wedding photos and, and everything. Um, thank you, Scott. I'm so happy to see all my favorite people here. Um, so, so yeah, so I definitely recommend TIFF files. Um, thank you guys for showing up. Awesome. So, so yeah, so here, let's just save this. Um, also, when you are starting to save stuff, um, want to make sure that you really start keeping track of how you're saving all your parts and pieces. Um, you know, like this is a master, this is the master file um, that I'm working on right now. It's got all these different layers. Um, so that's what I'm going to, and this piece is called Artifact 10. So I'm going to do Artifact 10 master file. And it will save as a TIFF, which is different. So it will show up um, here. Image compression, none. Um, interweaved. I don't know what that is. It's probably like, I haven't messed with it yet, so it must work. Um, um, all right, so including layers will increase file size. So this is um, something you want. And again, like if you're running out of space on your computer too, I would just save it as a PSD. TIFF files are huge. They're like three times the size of other files, but it's um, a way you can really guarantee that it's not doing those kind of compressions um, um, because that's, it, it's doing those compressions to save you file size space. Um, but if you want the real deal and don't want it to start getting damaged, save it as a TIFF file, save it as big as you can. Um, um, and, and if uh, storage is an issue for you, something I would invest in like ASAP is an external hard drive. Um, I actually need to get a new one and back up all of this work. Google Drive is great, but it does have its uh, maxes that you can hit. And also it's like, you know, I, I personally don't want to put 100% of my info on the internet. They already have most of it, I'm sure. Um, but just having that practice of um, saving and backing up your stuff is very important. Do not trust in these facilities to do it for you. Um, like I just realized that my phone erased all my photos from 2019 um, or 2018 and 2019 because I didn't pay for the, the bigger cloud storage. So now those photos are pretty sure gone. Someone might disagree with that, correct me, but um, uh, yeah, store your stuff offline if you can. Get one of those. You can get a five terabyte hard drive for $100 right now. And it might seem like a lot, but that is a massive investment in your file storage. Um, if, if you are dealing with a cell phone or something like that, um, and you're trying to figure out how to move things to something like an external hard drive, um, the, my first and easiest piece of advice is to go to a library or something like that, and use a computer, plug it in manually. Um, there's also some apps that or things like Dropbox that you can actually stream content to um, and or get a little dongle for your phone. Um, if, if you guys have any more questions about that, I'm going to try to pull some resources up because I think that's a important thing to know. Um, and it'd be awesome if you can just send your files directly to an external hard drive um, without having to manage all your files over a computer. Um, um, so, um, yeah, moving on here, doing cool effects. We're doing all sorts of stuff. Um, I really like what I've got here. Now, now that I've got everything cut out, that's great. So now we actually get to have a little fun and try some different things, try some different techniques, um, and also come up with clever ways of modifying our art so that when we do animate it, we have some fun stuff to work with and we can explore more options. Um, 
like. Uh, the initial tutorial that I put together for this was very straightforward. It was about cutting out the backgrounds and um, adding an animated image in the back, um, which is what we're going to do um, and finish out tomorrow uh, with the second half of the, the workshop uh, covering animation and the augmented reality. Um, but for now, um, since we um, still have just a little bit more time, um, yeah, let's just mess around here and I'll show you guys some cool Photoshop techniques. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them right here in the chat. I will answer them as we craft and build some stuff. Um, but I'm just going to keep going here. Um, yeah, so I really like what we did here. Um, but it's got these different effects. So with these effects, this is where I can um, to kind of apply those effects so that it's just a regular bitmap. You go to Raterize Layer Style. This kind of, um, you know, compared to, what am I trying to do here? Oops. Uh, yeah. So, um, this without the effects looks like this. But now once I apply the effects, it's permanently part of the art. Um, and this is where I can do that image adjust. Let's, um, let's mess with the contrast. So now the contrast is, let's make it darker. Um, something like that. Now, if I go to brave here let me look something up let's look up marble pattern so now let's just choose let's uh choose something colorful and that way i can show you guys how to adjust those colors as well so oh, oh. let's see if i can right click and save here um, so here's another great thing that I can show you guys um, that's very helpful. When you guys find an image on the internet that you want to use for something, um, multiple different ways of going about it, multiple different ways of pirating it off the internet, um, but there's, there's good ways and bad ways and um, also want to make sure that um, for for me, most of the time when I'm using other art that I'm finding online, um, I usually modify it in a, a certain way or effect um, so that it's not recognizable to the last piece. Um, uh, and, and one of the biggest rules is if it's clearly made by an artist and they have a specific style or something, even if it's just some cool effect, you know, stay clear of using clearly somebody's personal art without their permission. Um, I would, and, or if you do have something that really fits what you're trying to do, for example, you, there's someone that's a perfect model position. Yeah. That you go and like put your flavor on it or modify it. Like if you're using a video for a background, maybe even tweaking the colors um, and flipping and, um, you know, you want to have some very specific intention not to just straight copy and paste artwork off of people's stuff. Um, and there's creative commons, and different things. Um, but I'd um, also with things like if you're using the Instagram app to add a bunch of things, like everything that's on there is public use. Um, but if you were trying to sell an art piece that was specifically somebody else's filter or somebody else's um, piece, I would just be careful. And um, they, they have something called kit bashing in the 3D world where you're using assets. Most of the time those assets are free, um, but it is easy to get in trouble by using files that are not meant for public use. Um, so be very careful when you're downloading other people's stuff. Um, in this case, you know, I'm copying and pasting this texture um, and I'm going to utilize it in a way that will not represent its original um, goal or picture. Um, 
as much as I can. And if I feel weird about it, then I take it off, you know, and make my own patterns. Um, but I know that artists use a lot of different stuff. Um, so that that's just my personal way of going about it. Stay clear of people's personal art. Hey, Yule, um, sorry to interrupt. You had a question from Remix in the chat yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, so I think what you were talking about was when I stretched that center ring out. Is that correct? This thing? Yeah, okay, so this ring right here, let's go back to my master file here. Um, so that ring... Um, I stretched out that edge, usually it cuts off right there, but now I have a little bit more meat to work with. So if I want to animate it and add a little depth, I've got a little bit more meat. If I just went and straight took this, this way right out of the center, um, like I can cut it out nice. Oops. Okay, I did not not cut that out very well. Um, but yeah, it just gives me, it, it's like I'm filling in that background um, where um, like, I'm trying to think of another way to create the example here, but yeah, if I just move this, um, you know, there's that edge, you know, so to make it, so there isn't that edge when I put it behind it, this lets me um, add that extra little bit behind it so I can add some perspective or make it move and it's not cutting or clipping. Like I can even extend it further. Um, um, this is something that will really be apparent um, during the animation class tomorrow that I'll be covering. Um, you'll really be able to see um, how we can utilize those different layers um, for different things. Um, like I want to give one quick example here. Um, like, um, like stickman drawing, perfect. Um, so yeah, here, let's just do this. A good example. Copy image, go into Photoshop, file new, create. Um, so, oh. Um, so here I want to just preserve just the stickmen. Um, if I go and select them, for example, oh God. Um, well, here as I'm doing this demonstration, I'm going to show you a really cool selection tool. So you can go select and then color range, and let's just select the black here. Um, here, let me, let me crop this so you guys can see what's going on. Um, so, select color range. It's like the black. I'm going to turn up the fuzziness so it picks up our little peeps. Um, and you can see it's still kind of gray, um, but it selected most of them. So now, I'm going to copy it, um, paste it, but before I paste it, I'm going to erase it from this background. Um, let me try to select it some more. Um, just going to press delete until it's completely gone. Okay. So, now though, you can see where we've erased it, there's those lines missing. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to do here is recreate some of that background layer. Oh wait, and then wait here, let's do control V. So now I got my dudes, but let's say I wanna animate them. See how that background is still kind of cut out? Now, pretty much what I'm doing with that circle is recreating some of that background yeah so here i'm gonna take this um boom 
control C, control V. Oh, wait. Is that from the right layer? Yep. Okay. C, control V. And then now I can move that over and fix those spots. Sometimes I use the arrow keys for very precise stuff. Um, and, you know, this is probably not the absolute best example, but just trying to show that, you know, that's what I'm recreating here is getting that extra little depth. So my cutouts don't look cheap. Um, uh, yeah. And also within that, having that little extra edge is similar to like having white around the edge of a cutout, for example. Um, like I'm trying to find a bad spot. I feel like I did a pretty decent job with this guy, but here, let me. Um, oh yeah, okay. So, so here too, you could see if I change this to, I'm gonna press Control U. I use Control U a lot. It's just like you need to make something bright or dark, or you need to work on different things. Um, so here, if I make it white, you can see there's all this junk that I need to clean up. Um, if you make it dark, it disappears, but that'll show up if you're using a transparent file or something like that. Um, so there you can go and clean that up. Um, so yeah, Oops, wrong layer. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to clean up both your foreground objects and your background objects. Um, and yeah, you know, um, similar to what I was saying about needing that bleed over, it's the same for behind the person. You know, if we we're using that original photo, um, you know, there is nothing behind them. So now we recreated that and now have um, a lot more space to do stuff or move it around and, um, and mess around. I think, yeah, and actually technically the head here, head is supposed to be in front of this. I forgot what shorter I wanted to do it. But anyways, so, um, well, we're actually, we got, dang. Yeah, see, I could do this for hours. We got 15 minutes left here. Um, if uh, anyone has any questions or um, uh, would like to say anything, uh, right now is a great time. Thank you, Remix, for the, the great question. Um, thank you, Jess and Abraham and Abraham and um, the whole gang. So, um, yeah, so, um, so we're actually, I will not be animating this in Photoshop. Um, there are some basic animation tools in Photoshop, um, but just like I was saying earlier, there's a million ways to do, um, get the same results with some of these. Ultimately, um, Photoshop is not very intuitive or designed for that. Um, like there are ways where you can make each frame in Photoshop, or you can open up like a video file in Photoshop and paint on every single frame. Um, so there's some very cool techniques for that. Um, I personally use After Effects for my video editing. Um, and we'll be doing a whole showcase on that tomorrow. Um, but specifically with some of the tools and effects that um, I've been showing now. I want to show you guys very specific. There's, yeah, again, there's a bunch of different ways going about this. Um, but I think something that a lot of artists, especially traditional artists who are trying to figure out how to work with art that they might have already created, you know, where it's like they have this amazing amount of work, but how can you add layers and how can they um, start working with what they've already got rather than starting all over. Um, so this is a great process of like how to treat an art piece um, uh, for AR. So I'm gonna send, um, yeah, if anyone has any more questions, please drop them, but I'm gonna send um, a picture to myself and show you guys um, that as well. Oh, and also um, one more thing I wanted to show you guys was now that we've been working on all these parts and pieces, I wanted to show you guys 
um, like the rough end goal and like the first thing that we're going to build tomorrow in the animation class. I've gone ahead and done all the parts in advance just to make sure that I have stuff to show you guys and my computer crashes or something um, that we still have a workshop. But this is what um, we're pretty much going to be working towards uh, for the first step. Um, very basic, uh, very simple, but um, really exciting just to like um, also with something like this, sometimes doing too much animation can take away from your piece. It's too busy. Um, so I feel like this is a really great, very subtle and simple thing that I could do where um, it's still the art piece. It's not taking away from the art, but it's just adding just a little bit extra. Um, so very excited to show that. And then um, now that this is built and we've already pretty much walked through a lot of the process to get here, um, animating this is very simple. A lot of it's just gonna be me showing you guys um, the tools, um, but I hope that we can get the video set up tomorrow, get all the AR set up, and then have a little bit more time towards the end to try some different kind of animation techniques, weird effects, even some 3D stuff. Um, and then um, on the second, the day after tomorrow, we're actually gonna be doing a whole presentation just on 3D design. Um, so I'm gonna be giving an introduction to a whole bunch of different 3D programs and uh, how you can get in great ways to start. Um, all the programs I use for the 3D software are free um, and have lots of resources. Um, that's something that I'm gonna be dropping in the chat at the um, end of the day today is um, this entire presentation and all the workshops in a doc, uh, just a Word doc. That way you can go down the list and see all the links and I'm trying to, I'm currently trying to organize them as best as I can to have the free resources here. Um, also with tutorials of beginner tutorials, intermediate, and advanced, and great places to start. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing a workshop in Blender day after tomorrow. Um, and from there, I can also show you guys some more crazy tools with AR. Um, Tomorrow, the main class is going to be uh, covering specifically Art of Vive. Um, that is what the, uh, the program that Streetwise and IRL and our whole team have decided would be the easiest to use for all artists. Um, and, uh, but there's a whole bunch of different kinds of AR programs and tools and file types. Um, and that's stuff that we're going to be going over tomorrow, um, which is going to be really, really awesome. There's so many resources out there. Um, so that's where it's like any, anyone that um, has some other ideas or information. I know I've seen a few people here in the chat that I know have already dabbled with some of this technology, whether it's the Spark AR um, filter system that's uh, built by Facebook and Instagram, which is super awesome. Um, but all sorts of other projects and programs um, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow is um, accessibility of like how, what are the programs that people will actually click on and use and what are those challenges of people getting involved or trying something new like that, you know, also knowing some basic things of like what, what's the age limitation on smartphones to be able to use the AR filters. Um, so we're going to be going through a lot of that information of um, and all those little details that aren't on their website um, where you click on. So um, very excited to share that through the perspective of a traditional artist trying to figure out how to utilize the tools um, to enhance their work, not just start over and do something completely different. Oh, I love seeing everyone share their stuff on social media here. Um, I feel like I already follow a bunch of you guys. Um, I'm so excited for the Streetwise event this year. I know they've been getting a lot of applications in. Um, uh, yeah, we're really excited to support um, Streetwise with some of those systems as well. Um, 
and uh, thank you, Julio. Um, yeah, don't you worry. Anyone who might not be available for the next few classes, don't worry because we're going to be uploading all of these and putting it all on YouTube. Um, and so, and, and having it on the streetwise YouTube. So it'll be available anytime, any day. Um, hopefully by tomorrow, I can also set up um, my key command setup. So you guys will be able to see every single thing that I type as well. Um, that way you guys can slow down, speed up, do whatever you guys need. Um, yeah, also wanna give a huge, um, Shout out to Godfrey or Boombox Head. He's the guy that I'm actually in his little studio. I've got a green screen behind me. I've got these sweet buttons where I can do the cool things. Um, so I've been really blessed to work with so many awesome people that can help us make this look more professional and make it um, accessible for everyone. So um, this is actually like, the, I feel like the first streamed video call I've done that hasn't like had every kind of issue. So um, very blessed to work with some great people here. So um, yeah, and just so you guys know, um, Boombox Head is also part of the IRL team. Um, we've been doing all sorts of projects over the last six months now. Uh, our largest being this big um, metaverse grant um, project where we've been building all these different spaces in 3D. Um, and that's something I'm very excited to talk about um, in September, where we're going to be covering all the different processes around Web3, being uh, the NFTs, the metaverse, um, different um, websites and where to go. Um, we've also been putting a lot of resources together for this. Um, and actually, let me share that here on my last few slides of the deal um oops i should have shared these earlier um uh, anyways where did my mouse go there we go okay so at the end here we have some resources for everyone um so nft's digital art resource doc these are all on irl art um oh yeah super awesome um seth like you guys should definitely apply as a team. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, so here we have NFTs and digital art, a whole bunch of resources on how to get involved there. We have an entire resource doc just on the metaverse and different 3D software and programs. Um, a lot of this I'll be covering the day after tomorrow. Um, and then we have an entire page just on DAOs, which are decentralized autonomous organizations. It's kind of the community mechanism for everything that's um, in the blockchain space and Web3 and decentralized. Um, and, and we've been participating in a lot of really amazing um, groups and communities that have been utilizing these Web3 systems. And that's how a lot of the funding for our latest projects have been received is um, through, these, through these decentralized organizations um, that are funding us to participate and do these projects. So um, I'm really excited to get Annie into the, that conversation as well. Um, she is um, a wealth of knowledge and resources. Um, and speaking on that, we will have some other um, speakers and guest presenters as well over um, the next few days and over the next uh, set of classes as well. Um, so um, please, uh, keep your ear out for the next couple classes. Um, we're going to be doing the next one tomorrow um, at 4.30 again, and that's going to be specifically going over animation uh, and then a full demonstration um, in Art of Vive, where I'm going to show everyone how to set up an account, upload their work, get it approved, and turn your art into AR filters. Um, yes, and um, I see what Annie's sharing there. I would definitely go, and um, if if you guys don't have a Discord, I would definitely check it out. Um, and the IRL art group is where we post a lot of our opportunities and activities. 
um, and all sorts of information. And um, um, it would be a great place to learn how to get involved with Discord. Um, also, I see Julio, you're talking about getting a crypto wallet. We have um, all the resources there on our NFTs and digital art resource doc there. Um, uh, Annie, I don't know if you could drop the, the link just for the resource doc page um, in the chat. Um, and, and also, um, if any of you guys have more questions um, that you'd like answered or something, you know, specifically like how to get a wallet set up, um, feel free to reach out to me via DM um, on social media um, at Yule Tech. Um, it's a great place to reach out. But if you have general questions about Web3 and how to get involved, um, asking your questions in our Discord would be a great place to start. Um, and also a great place to meet all the other community members um, that we work with that are trying to answer the same questions um, or might have those answers for you. So we really recommend that um, you get involved. Um, and yeah, so Annie right here in the chat drops the iralart.com slash pages slash NFT digital art resource doc um, that will bring you directly to all of our resources. And a lot of them have been listed chronologically. So if you're trying to set up a wallet and you need to start from scratch, um, it will start you at the top and then slowly work your way down the different resources um, to learn. So, um, and if you guys have any questions, yeah, Julio, feel free to um, ask me or um, I know that uh, we also have a calendar that you can schedule an appointment from um, through the um, IRL art page, so. Well, I just saw my recording hit two hours, so I think we're, oh yeah, we got one minute left. Um, Annie, I don't know, do you wanna, do you wanna add anything before we wrap this up? Or if um, anyone else has any more questions, hopefully I didn't miss any here. Oh, I thought you did such a good job, Yule. I even learned something and I've been using Photoshop. I think I was trying to remember since like, 2008 <laughs> and so it's so cool to see how different people use the same software because there really is a lot of ways to do the same thing like I've literally used the eraser tool to as in a similar way yeah. before I got good at doing you know those line tools and um so I, yeah I think it's just so cool to see um how you're doing this and like, I don't know how this would pan out, but I wish we could all like unmute and give you an applause because I feel like it went so awesome. So I'll give you a little applause. And yeah. Yay! Cool. Yeah. So that was, that was great. And I look forward to the next couple of days and, um, you know, like we live here, we're, we're here and just want to continue like having these conversations. Um, our gallery is very much so a community hub and we always invite people if you want to host a meetup or, you know, want to dig in on this stuff more, we'd be happy to host like an IRL class and just holler at us. We try to make ourselves available to really, um, you know, just making this stuff accessible and we're very collaborative. So I just um, want to like reiterate that, that this doesn't have to be intimidating or anything. We're all like artists ourselves figuring this stuff out together. So yeah, that's all I had. Yeah, also if you guys have any questions outside of this, um, feel free yeah, to, to DM me directly. I'm, I'm finally done with some, some really big projects. So I have a little bit more time and I'd be happy to help um, set you up or walk you through any um, issues that you're coming across. Um, uh, thank you, Andy, for your kind words. And uh, um, yeah, we're just really excited. And um, and yeah, especially relating to the call, if you guys have a cool idea or project for an AR piece or an activated mural, um, please let me know your ideas and I can help point you guys in the right direction. 
And also the class tomorrow, I think is really going to round out a lot of what I've been talking about as well and, and show you guys, you know, those start to finish steps. We just started, but we're, we're going to finish it tomorrow. Um, and, um, and then once we walk through everything, then we can start talking about different options and variations and different kinds of ways that you can utilize the AR software. Um, so that's going to be more covered tomorrow. And I'm really excited about that. So, um, well, sweet. Thank you, everyone. I think we're going to wrap things up. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone so much. And I hope I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful evening.